Hey, Side students. Uh, today I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction to how to design experiments so you can get good results and build the good kind of models that we like to make in science. Today we're talking about experimental design, and experimental design really is just getting the right numbers into our models so we can make them predictive and useful. What we need for numbers are things called experimental variables. These are the quantities that generate our data. There are a few characteristics that these variables always have. One of them is that they are measurable. In designing an experiment, we need to think about how the quantity we're interested in can be measured with the best precision that's available to us. It's also important for a successful experiment that these measurable variables are likely to be related to each other. If we choose to measure things that have probably have no relationship to each other, the result will probably be a waste of time. It's also important that we have some way to know or dictate the value of one of these variables in this experiment. Let's explore the idea of experimental design by using an example. Suppose our research question is, how does the size of a wire affect its strength? Here, the two quantities that we're interested in are the size of the wire and its strength. For a good experimental design, we need to think about how can we measure the wire size and how can we control or dictate it? We also need to ask the same questions about the strength of the wire. Is it measurable? and is there a way that we could control its size. We also need to ask ourselves, is it likely that these two quantities are related to each other? In other words, does changing one cause the other one also to be changed? We could measure the size of the wire by measuring its diameter using a tool like these calipers here. We could measure the strength of the wire by hanging weights from it and increasing the weight until we see it finally break and then measuring how much weight it took to break the wire. The two types of variables in an experiment are called the independent variable and the dependent variable. The independent variable is the one that we deliberately change in the experiment. Or in some cases, the independent variable is one that we cannot change, but we do know it. A great example of such an independent variable is time. The dependent variable responds to change during the experiment if it's related to the independent variable. For example, if we see a pot of water cooling as time increases, time would have to be the dependent variable because we can't warm the pot up and make time go backwards. Sometimes we choose the independent variable based on what's easiest for the experimenter to control. For example, if you wanted to study the effect of diet on the size of a rodent, it wouldn't make much sense to just observe many, many rodents and then try and work backwards to figure out what their diet happened to be. Instead, the experimenter would be wiser to choose some measurable aspect of the rodent's diet and change that on purpose, and then watch what happens to a measurable quantity of the rodent, like its weight. In our experiment, it probably makes the most sense to control the diameter of the wire and observe the breaking strength, rather than choosing some breaking strengths ahead of time and then trying to guess what wire diameters we would have to have to match those strengths. The final thing to consider when designing an experiment is something called control variables, or just controls for short. Controls are factors or quantities that we think might influence the dependent variable that don't happen to be the independent variable. When we identify control variables, we need to find some way to keep them from changing, or if that's impossible, to at least be able to account for their effects. What would be some control variables in our experiment? Some examples might be the material that the wire is made of, the length of the wire, how the weight is attached to the wire, the smoothness and general condition of the wire. All of those are things that could possibly affect the breaking strength, but don't happen to be diameter. So this gives us a kind of an overview of how to design an experiment. The result of the experiment is the dependent and the independent variable values. In the next videos, we're going to have to figure out how do we process those so we can actually build a model.